What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Today I'm going to have for you, um, it's pretty much just talk. I'm not going to be replacing anything. I'm just going to be talking about these, uh, these cooling control valves that keep going bad on these Mazdas. And uh, I'm just going to show you pretty much what I go through to diagnose it so you guys can kind of see what the steps I do to diagnose it. It's real simple and I kind of just want to give you a look at what the valve actually does, like the inner workings of the valve. All right, so let's get to it. So I already went ahead and scanned the vehicle and got the code from it, the P0126. And I'm gonna show you what you're gonna look for to know if the coolant control valve is bad. And honestly, I've never replaced any, like whenever I get that code P0126, it's always been a coolant control valve and I've replaced quite a few. These are two right here that I just replaced uh, this past week. And it usually does this, they'll start acting up whenever they're whenever it's cold outside and it's winter time right now it's about 30 degrees outside and they'll start acting up so I went ahead and scanned the vehicle already as you can see there's a code P0126 and what you're gonna look for is the snapshot data snapshot data is pretty much all the data the car saved whenever the check engine light was uh, was thrown or whenever the check engine light came on it'll save all this data of what the car was doing at the time RPM, air intake temperature, 50, but you're going to want to look for is ECT, engine coolant temp. And this one right here is at 156 degrees Fahrenheit. So, on the technical service bulletin for the vehicle, here it is right here on the TSB. Check engine light for P0126. I'm going to go down over here to the repair procedure, and you're going to see cooling temperature, freeze frame data. So if the data is around, uh, I'd say if it's between 104 and 176, then proceed to step two. And as you can see, step two just says replace the cooling control valve. And I've never seen the, the sensor or I've never seen the temperature out of that range. It's always in between, as you can see. 156 is between 104 and one, what is it? 104 and 176 so that's pretty much it's pretty much already telling me that we need to replace that valve so that's if you guys have access to like a scanner like this you'll be able to get that freeze frame data I don't know if uh, smaller scanners will get it I know that my computer is able to get all that freeze frame data so alright so here I have two cooling control valves uh, I actually replaced both of these on um, two separate vehicles last week so that goes to show you that I believe that this is probably the least reliable part on some of these Sky Active engines. And as you can see, I'm kind of just going to show you how they work. So there's a motor in here. And right in here, I'm just going to pull it apart. You can see on each side, the coolant can go through. So this one is actually stuck. As you can see, there's a passage right here. That allows coolant to flow and there's another passage on the other side that allows coolant to flow that way so it, what happens is this will open and this is the part that mates to the engine that allows coolant to flow in the block so that whenever the engine gets up to operating temperature the cylinder right here is normally closed you can see right there how it kind of works it'll spin and close off the passages or it'll be open and let coolant flow through here and into the engine. So what's happening is this this coolant control valve right here is getting stuck in a safe mode called uh, a dry hollow. And I had to actually Google it because I didn't know what dry hollow meant. And it meant it pretty much means like the absence of moisture. So it goes into this fill safe mode. There is no there is no opening it and fixing it. There is no yeah, there's no fixing anything on these. The only thing to do is just replace it. So I just kind of wanted to show you the inner workings of it and what's going on, what happens. It's just, they just get stuck in a fail-safe mode and there's, there's nothing you can do, just replace. And here's this other one, as you can see. It's also in that, it's also stuck. Here's the passage and here's the other one and they're just open. It's not closed how it should be whenever you start the engine. Yeah, I'll pull this one out as well so I can give you, a, so I can kind of show you. 
Yeah, you can see on this one where it closes. Yeah, you can see it. It's supposed to be right there. You can see that it'll close and seal itself and not allow coolant to go into the engine. And then it'll spin, bam, and then coolant can flow straight through and into the engine. And that's pretty much it. I just wanted to give you guys a quick look and tear down, kind of show you how these are working, how they kind of function, these electronic thermostats. I honestly, I don't like them. I prefer a good old fashioned mechanical thermostat. And uh, honestly, good news is the new CX-5s have a, uh, the 2024 CX-5s have a revised engine on them. And they have, a, they have a couple of different things done to them. Like they have a EGR valve and they did away with these. They don't, the new CX-5s do not come with these anymore. They come with good old fashioned mechanical thermostats, at least here in the States. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys liked the video, if you enjoyed the content, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.